Hello, welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Uh, on screen today, uh, we've got a puzzle by Prowling Tiger. And this is a bit of an experiment. Yesterday's uh, video was a bit of an experiment in which I attempted a logic puzzle I'd never seen before, or never seen the puzzle type before. Um, and it seems to have been reasonably well received. So you sort of saw, saw me figuring out the logic on the fly. Well, today, most of the puzzles that we showcase on Cracking the Cryptic have been heavily tested by our testers. Um, so we we know quite a lot about the puzzles in terms of you know how difficult they're likely to be. We don't know the solution paths because Mark and I solve them live, but we do know a little bit about the you know that the puzzle has a unique solution, etc. Well, this puzzle hasn't been tested by anybody. Um, it's appeared on Logic Masters Germany, and it hasn't had enough solves yet to to merit its rating over there. So it's unrated. Um, but we featured this series by Prowling Tiger a few times on Cracking the Cryptic already, and it's a series where you have to find the value of X in order to solve the puzzle. And I've really enjoyed these puzzles, and I noted that Prowling Tiger's comments when he introduces this puzzle on Logic Masters Germany suggest it's the puzzle he's the most proud of. He says he's extraordinarily proud of this puzzle, but it does involve some fairly uh, unusual logic, apparently. So that sounds like it's right up my street. Um, so, yeah, so I want to try it for that reason. The other reason I want to try it is we've had three requests to try it from people who haven't managed to solve it yet. Um, and the, the final reason is a little bit more embarrassing, and that is that I have a little bit of extra time today and if I fail to solve this puzzle, I should still have enough time to do another video and still get it uploaded by half past eight this evening. So, um, yeah, it may be if I fail, obviously, you'll never see this video, um, but I really hope that you will. Um, so that's that. Now, anything else to mention? Yes, there are a couple of things I want to mention today. One of them is uh, do check out Mitchell Lee's uh, video solve of his puzzle, his competition puzzle that we released uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it was an odd, even little killer Sudoku of brutal difficulty. And many of you tried it. Many of you succeeded in solving it. Uh, but Mitchell Lee's video is fantastic because it explains how to logically solve it. And that video is getting a lot of very nice feedback. So it's available to everyone who's a patron of the channel over on Patreon. Um, and the other thing I wanted to ask, actually, was for some feedback. Uh, as you know, you don't have to be a genius to know this, uh, I am a huge fan of all puzzles. Uh, I love Sudoku, obviously, but I really enjoy, um, you know, puzzles like yesterday's puzzle, which was more of a logic puzzle. Um, or a different sort of logic puzzle to Sudoku. And there's a whole world of puzzles like that out there, sort of loop puzzles, object placement puzzles, region division puzzles. Um, and, you know, as you know, from time to time, I, I show them on Cracking the Cryptic because I definitely think there's a place for them on the channel. Um, but I'd like some guidance from you guys in terms of how often you'd like to see things that are not Sudoku, um, you know, or are you just here for the Sudoku variants? Are you just here but for you know, Mark's Mac Damon like good looks or um, or do you want to see more logic puzzles uh, on the channel? Or maybe if you do want to see more logic puzzles, 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 you don't want them to take the place of the Sudoku puzzles. We just don't know at the moment. So we're sort of we're being guided by the YouTube views and that obviously, you know, relies a bit on how YouTube interprets the videos. Um, but yeah, so I would just be interested to hear from those of you with strong views on what you want to see and how much of it you'd like to see. Um, so if anyone has the time to comment, that would be most appreciative. All we're trying to do is to make this channel as uh, entertaining as we can. Um, now, let's get on to the rules of Prowling Tiger's puzzle. So you can see we're going to have to find the value of X. And I think this is some sort of sandwich Sudoku. So let's read the rules. We've got normal Sudoku rules apply. Numbers on the outside of the grid give the sum of all the digits between 1 and 9 in that row or column. Sandwich clues with a slash represent OR. Let's just have a look at that. So, okay, so there are, right, in these two rows, look, the clues outside the grid have do have slashes in them. This one has loads of slashes. It's, so that's saying that this sandwich clue for this row is 0 OR, 2 or x or 2x so that sounds about as helpful as yeah well not a lot and that does not sound helpful at all anyway what else have we got we've got 
Oh, we've got a 39 arrow up there. So that means this diagonal has got to add up to 39. And we've got this square labeled with x plus 1. So what we have to put in this square is the value of x plus 1. So if we found x was 5, this square would have to equal 6. So that's what we put into this, this cell. Uh, now, apart from that, I think that's all the rules. Um, do have a go at the puzzle first, obviously. The way to play, as always, is to click the link under the video. And with that, let us get cracking. Um, now, on difficult sandwich Sudokus, one thing I recommend is to label cells that cannot be ones and nines. So I'm going to start off by labeling this cell green in a profound insight. Um, this clue is eight. Eight must be at least one cell of, of sort of sandwich. You know, if we put an eight in there, the nine would have to be here. So definitely we can't put the nine in either of those two squares. So let's label those green. That's green. I'm a Oh no, that might not be green. What if X was eight? Then it, then that would be nine. Oh no, that it can't be nine because of the zero clue here. Oh, this is already quite interesting. So, so in fact, X can't be nine because if X was nine, that would be a 10. X can't be eight because if X was eight, that would be a nine. And then you'd have to put a one in one of those two squares because of the zero clue. So X is not eight or nine. And as and as x plus one has to go into the Sudoku, x x is a single digit number. X can't be one because there are sandwich clues that equal one. And obviously, if if that's saying that the sum of the digits sandwiched between the one and the nine is equal to one, we would have that sort of arrangement going on. That definitely breaks the rules of Sudoku. Um, so x is not one. It's not. 8 and it's not 9. So it's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 or 7. Uh, now, how do we tell which one of those it is? Okay, well, we can do a little bit look with these 35 minus x is a pretty large sandwich Sudoku clue because its minimum value is 28. And 28 is quite an interesting number because that means you can't put a one or a nine in any of the central three positions. If you try and put a one, oh, one's not a good choice because there's a one here. Let's try and put a nine here. What's the furthest away from this nine we could put the one? Well, it would be here. That would mean these four cells have got to sum up. What's the maximum we could make these four cells sum to? Well, it would be 8 plus 7 plus 6 plus 5, which is 26. Now, if this has a minimum value of 28, you can see we can never put the 1 here. So all of those turn green. In fact, all of these turn green. Okay, well, this is, this is interesting because now where do we put the 1 and 9 in box 4? They've got to appear in column two. So these squares can't be green, can't be ones and nines. The ones and nines in this column are locked into these yellow squares. So along the top, we've got all these enormous clues, 34 minus X. So the minimum value of that is 27, 27 is bigger than 26, another great thing you learn on cracking the cryptic, so we can make all those green. Now this one, the minimum value is, tw uh, the minimum value for this one is 26, which is an annoying total, because that means we can't rule out a one or a nine from those squares. We can rule it out of the central square, but that's as good as we can do. That's green, of course, because it can't be a nine. We've looked at that already. So looking along this row, there are only three cells that could be ones and nines. We've got a choice of clues. We've either got two times X, which is a digit. So that's going to be a sandwich total that is between four and 14 inclusive. 
So if that was the case, you'd have to use the middle cell because you can't make those five cells add up to as little as 14. Or 35 minus x, which has a minimum value of 28, so we'd have to use those squares. Okay, so it's not quite good enough to know what we do there. Okay, uh, 39 along the diagonal, that must be useless. Uh, I say that because the average, therefore, for the nine cells is very close to four and a half. And that's very close to the average value of the numbers from one to nine. Um, so... What is it we're meant to appreciate here? We are meant to... Uh, sorry, I'm just a bit struggling here to figure out what we're meant to do. Um, so there's got to be a 1 or a 9 in here. There's got to be a 1 or a 9 in here. There's got to be a 1 or a 9 in here. There's got to be a 1 or a 9 in there. Let's label those purple and take another stair. The same is true over there. Now, we've also got five clues in this these rows that are equal to x, and one that's only just greater than x. Okay, let's... Right. This is interesting. These two, these two clues, 35 minus x, in both of these columns are interesting because I don't think it's possible that x is equal to either 2, 3 or 4. Now why have I picked 2, 3 and 4? Well it's because 2, 3 and 4 um, can only be made in Sandwich Sudoku outside the sandwich with single digits. Because obviously if I try and make 4 with 2 digits, I'd have to use 1 and 3, and that would repeat the 1 in the column. So if 2, 3 and 4 are single digit totals, and we try and make x equal to those, how do we fill column 1 and column 3? The answer is that you can't. I don't think. I, I need to... I, it feels like we can't. Anyway, so if... Let's look at column one first. If we try and put a one nine here, and we're saying that, let's just imagine x was equal to three. Then we know there will be a three here outside the sum because the sum is equal to 35 minus x, which is three, that's 32. So I'd have to put 32 inside the sum. Plus one plus nine is 42. I know the sum of the whole column is 45, and that's why I know this square would have to equal 3. But now, what do I do next? Well, now I've got to think about how to fill this column. Now, I can't put the 1 and the 9 here, because that will mean I have to put a 1 or a 9 here and repeat the 3 in the row and the box. Not a good idea. So I would have to do it the other way round. I'd have to put the 1 and the 9 here, the 1 and the 9 here, and the 3 up here. And so far, it looks like this might work, except look, this clue is x. How on earth do I fill it? Well, I can't, because that means there's got to be, between the 1 and the 9 in row 8, I've got to put a 3, and the 3 will have to go there, and that definitely doesn't work. Now, this is really, really gorgeous, because, of course, the only other configuration that's possible in these columns is going to be if I don't put the 1 and 9 here, I put it here. For the numbers 2, 3, and 4, there can only be one cell outside the sandwich. So you'd have to go like this, like this, and this one breaks because x in row 2 is the same as x in row 8. That is weird, but it is very beautiful because that... Oh my goodness, what have I done there? I think I've got rid of all the colouring. Let's put the colouring back. But now we now know that x is not 2, 3, or 4. So x is equal to 5, 6, or 7, which means x plus 1 is equal to 6, 7, or 8.
which means that I need to say something to fill the gap while my brain <laughs> tries to work out what what on earth to look at next. Um, ah, eight can't be more than a two cell sandwich. So the furthest away the nine could be going down the column would be here. So those two squares are green. And um, so although I've got the value of x down to 5, 6 or 7, I really don't know much about it. There's still something weird going on in these columns, isn't there? This, I think column 1 and column 3... are probably the places we need to look to at least to understand the restrictions that are existing around the value of x. I'm just actually also wondering about the zero clue here. Here, here's something. Here... Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. If we put zero, if I put ones and nines there, Let me just, I think I'm going to have to look at this to actually. Right. Here is something interesting. Maybe I was wrong, actually. Maybe the, maybe the thing we need to look at is column four, because this is impossible. Why is it impossible? Well, let's look at it. If the one, if we try and put the 1 and the 9 into this domino, this is really very interesting, actually. Um, how do we do it? That's the question. Obviously, all of those squares couldn't be 1s and 9s, because one we know x is either equal to 5, 6, or 7. So we're end, we end up with this pattern, and we're going to have to put the 1s and 9s somehow into row 8 and row 9. How should we do it? Well... One option would be we try and put the 1 and the 9 in the same column. We'd, we could put them both there. Well, that clearly won't work. 35 minus x is a very big number. It is not equal to 0. Again, things you work, you learn on cracking the cryptic. Same thing over this side. If we put the 1s and 9s the same side, it runs afoul of the, the big clue in this column. It can't go further away. The 1s and 9s can't go further away from there because 7 has a maximum sandwich total of two cells. So what we'd have to do in this situation is to put one, one and nine in one row and one, one and nine in the other. And why is that a problem? Well, I'm sure you can see, but if we do this, let's say I go for that for configuration, it doesn't matter if it's the other way around. Now the remaining one and nine in this box has to be in one of those three squares. The remaining one and nine over in this box has to be in one of those three squares because we've already got a one and nine in rows eight and rows nine. But that means that the sand that these three squares are inside the sandwich. And why is that a problem? Well, because X is a maximum value of seven. So I cannot have a three cell sandwich. It's impossible. Now, Now the thing is, that may be true. Oh, it's got rid of my highlighting again. That may, whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't want to do that. Um, in fact, sorry, I'm just gonna have to correct a load of, so I think this is where we were up to before we, so we were looking at this domino. This domino cannot be a one or a nine, therefore this square is green. Now, surely it works the same way for this domino. It does, it works identically. If we try and put the ones and nines into these squares, what do we do now? We can't, where, obviously all those squares are green because we've already got the one and the nine in this, uh, in this box. So again, we run into exactly the same problem, this time in regarding row nine. 
we would have to have the sandwich taking these three squares, which is impossible. So this doesn't work either. Now, what does that mean? That means we can delete these. These Both of these squares are now green. And now let's consider this domino. Can this be one and nine? Ah, now this could be one and nine bobbins because Ah, yeah, look. So now I can escape the trap, if you like, using either of these two squares. It's just, yeah, once you move into the, bo into the box in the middle, you don't have the same restriction applying. So this, this is possible. This is possible. So, but can we do the same thing up here? Yeah, yeah, we can. That's going to be the same logic. The X plus one, does that put a fly in the ointment? No, it doesn't. It's a, That's weird, actually. This X plus one is fascinating because, because X can only equal seven, X plus one can only equal eight, and eight still has to be a two cell sandwich total. It's nine that is the first sandwich total that can be three cells, two, three, and four. So that's very interesting. So this doesn't work for exact. It's just exactly the same logic as down there. And it's going to be the same for this domino, isn't it? In fact, this domino. Yeah, this domino is a better way of looking at the um, this this one nine, this X plus one point, because now if I get to this position, obviously all of these turn green, these turn green. So I'd have to have the ones and nines offset. We've already looked at that. And then I have to span this whole, this three cell region in uh, in row one. And I've got X plus one. I've got a little bit more license to do it, but it's still not enough. It won't get me there. Seven is still too, well, seven and eight are too small. So, so what does all this mean? I haven't got a Scooby-Doo, but it seems quite, it's, it seemed like an interesting excursion into the world of zero dominoes in a column. So these two have to be green. So the one, ah, now, so the ones and nines in, do I have a problem here or is that, this would be very good if I could rule this out. So this would have to go nine, one. problem is this, this has basically all the options in the world so this isn't restricting the value of this at all and in fact now that's green sorry isn't it that is green for sure those two are green down there as well but it's absolutely possible now for this to be a nine all this to be it. There's just there's just not the same restriction because the one and the nine are not used up in this box. Uh, so that that is that's all possible, unfortunately. Let's get rid of a, the pencil marking. So in this column, I think either of these two possibilities are real, but but. That means that one of these two cells is definitely a one or a nine, and it's not a one. So one of these two squares is a nine. So the rest of the box turns green. Ah, so this clue, this clue now is not to, it, this clue is 35 minus X, and we get the ones and the nines in the row. But 35 minus x, its minimum value is is a num is 28, 29, or 30. So these squares are either two and three if it's five, two and four if it's six, or three and four, or two or five if it's seven. So there is uh, that one can't be five because of the five here. 
Good grief. Okay, so <laughs> we've done a lot of work. I've still not got a digit in the grid. This is becoming commonplace on Cracking the Cryptic to watch me solve Sudoku's where I can't put digits in the grid. Um, and I don't really feel I'm even close to putting a digit. I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not even close to working out what X is after half an hour nearly. Um, okay, so what do we do now? One of the things that is interesting is this this business about we've got to be careful about stopping sandwich sums or sandwiches occurring that span these boxes because that in every single case here x plus one or x you cannot do it it's impossible so so that means, actually, if we think about this box, let's just think about this box for a second. We know that there will be a 1 and a 9 in this box somewhere. And we know whichever way... So let's imagine this was a 1 or a 9, just for the sake of... Uh, just so I can show you what I'm thinking about here. And let's imagine, I don't know, that one was a 1 or a 9. Now, it's not possible for these to go different ways. So if we try to go, you know, leftwards from this one and rightwards from this one, that breaks because now I have to put the ones and the nines into these triominoes here and I have to span this middle box, which we know is impossible. So wherever the one and the nine go in, in this box here, They have to join this, they have to go the same way. So, this, you know, for example, if this went like this, that would then work because you could put the one and the nine in this box in the same box of the Sudoku, and you have to put X between them. So, there is definitely something going on here where. I have to be very careful about creating situations that might involve spanning these. Both of these boxes are a problem. We must not span both of these boxes. So we must not span both of these boxes. Or, I, in fact, we must not span either of these boxes. So, if I'm not going to span the box, the other thing that's interesting about that, you know, is that if if I can't span this box. There must be a situation where one side of this or the other side or both sides have their one and their nine in the same row. Because otherwise I end up having to. We've, we've already sort of looked at this. Wherever the one and the nine go in this box, either I've got to pair them up with a one or a nine in the same box on the other side which means that the one and the nine in either this box or this box or both boxes, although that might not be possible up here because I can't actually split the one and the nine up, but one side or another up, up at the top has to have a one nine in the same row. Now, does that matter? See, the other, the other issue with that is that it's actually quite difficult to put. Now, I'm actually looking at, um, I'm trying to focus on this, these three columns because
either this is weird actually there is there's some there, there's this and I know I'm being the, the least articulate man in Christendom at the moment but I will I will I will try and improve but my my brain is sort of buzzing with um, noise and I'm just trying to filter the noise into something that is intelligent um, but what I'm thinking about is that I've got to be a bit careful with these columns here because I've got to put a 1 or a 9 into this one of these three squares and I've got to put a 1 or a 9 into one of those three squares now is it possible in columns one, two, and three, that the one and the nine that's the counterpart to this, to wherever I put the one and the nine in this, these three squares, is in the same row? And is it possible that down here it's in the same row? Because I don't know, maybe this is maybe this is not quite I'm, what I'm what I'm trying to think about is whether it's actually the case that one of these ones and nines has to take a digit or has to be a partner of a one or a nine in column four. Because, for example, hopefully it's fairly clear to people, if I put ones and nines in those four cells, the puzzle breaks. Because whatever I make X, X is making an appearance in both of those cells, which won't work. Um, so, I've got to avoid that. So... Now, I've got to avoid that, but I also know, I know for certain, uh, I'm so close to understanding this, but I'm not quite getting it. I know for certain that in either this box or this box, the one and the nine share a row. That, that's forced by the fact that I cannot bridge this, this central box. I cannot bridge it. So I know that in either this one or this one or both, the one and the nine appear in the same row. And, and the same is obviously true down here. That That is also true. So the one... Now, of course, it's possible that the one and the nine here are in the same row, but the one and the nine here are in... are over, over on the right-hand side rather than this side. But it would be quite interesting to know that that was true, wouldn't it? So let's test this. Is it possible to construct, is it possible to fill columns one, two, and three with ones and nines such that I never use column four? Is, is that possible? Is that possible? And of course, what that means is if I don't use column four. Yeah, this is interesting. If I don't, if I if I remove the possibility of using column four, then wherever the one and nine go in these three cells, its pair has got to be in the same row as it. So, ah, right. OK, that's a nice way of looking at it. So if. 
if so I would be forced in other words if I if I remove my ability to use row four of the column four of the grid to construct the one nine pairs because X can't be a three digit sandwich wherever I put the one and the nine here if I'm not allowed to use column four for its pair its pair must be it must be in the same row as it now 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 maybe I'm getting somewhere is that possible now there are some things that we can immediately rule out that's impossible because if if we put the one and the nine in either of those two positions or either of those two positions you can hopefully immediately see that we will find a counterpart down here which which will repeat x in in column two because these are just equal to x so, and these are equal to x so we just get a repeat of the x in column two so the only way that this could work is if the one and the nine in box one are in these two cells now if the one and the nine are in these two cells do we have a problem down here this is going to be interesting because if the one and the nine are here clearly the one and the nine down here can't be in those two cells that would not work because we need to have outies equal to x and x is not equal to zero so this is not possible this is not possible either because if this was a one nine pair x would appear in both of those cells and that doesn't work because we can't repeat a digit in a row and in a box so you'd have to put the one and the nine here and here now does this work no 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 this does not work this most certainly doesn't work because now we could rule out certain values of x straight away can x be five well no because then those two squares would have to be those four squares would all have to be selected from two and three can x be six no they'd have to be selected from two and four now what about x equals seven Oh, this is gorgeous x, x equals 7 doesn't work either because if x equals 7 this square is an 8 and now these two squares add up to 7 and these two squares add up to 7 and you can't put an 8 in box 7 of the grid there is nowhere for it to go now this feels th this feels important to me why well because now I have shown for certain that in one of in at least one of this box is uh, one and nine that's appearing in this triple and the one and nine that's appearing in this triple I have to come out and take one of these two squares now And I think that is stronger than where we were before, because before, wherever this zero was joined up with, could have gone this way. But I'm now saying, I'm now saying that either this is joining to this, or this is joining to this, for certain. Now, the other thing I'm just wondering about is that this is incredibly constrained up here. I'm sure that there is a better way of doing this as well. And please, if you've spotted a more sensible way of uh, deciphering the logic in this puzzle, then please share it in the comments. I always read the comments in the hope of discovering how to become a better solver myself. So I'd really appreciate it if somebody's got a really elegant way of thinking about this, because I feel like I'm struggling a bit with this. But... if yeah this is actually I'm gonna look at this because this square can't be a one or a nine so and this was definitely constrained yeah so if this square is a one or a nine maybe I should have started here if this square is a one or a nine what's its counterpart gonna be in this row well it can only be this square that's got to be a one or a nine 
and we've already seen this is very problematic. We've ruled out situations where um, the ones and the nines in box seven share the same row, but what we haven't done is ruled out situations where they are offset. So maybe we can construct, well, First thing we can do is rule out a 1 or a 9 in either of those squares. Impossible, because both of these have outies, so these are not possible. Now, is it possible then, let's try it this way around, is that possible? Uh, no, is I think the answer. That does not work. This ah this is this is really really amazing actually. Look, let's think about this. So could this arrangement ever be true? Well, the way it fails is because of this x. I think it's going to run into the same. Or does it? Hang on, hang on a moment. Let's work it through. So. Let's work it through with x equals 5. If x equals 5, we get a 5 here, a 2, 3 here, and this, this breaks. Because this, this domino here has to sum up to 5, but it can't use 2 and 3, so it's impossible. It's exactly the same logic with x equals 6. Those two squares would have to add up to 6. They can't, um, so that doesn't work. So the question is whether this works with x equals 7. Now if x equals 7, this square is a 7. I'm going to have a problem with 8 again, aren't I? I'm going to have a problem with 8. This becomes an 8 and there's nowhere to put an 8 here actually. It just breaks straight away. Those two squares have got to add to 7. These two squares have got to add to 7 and 8 isn't possible in the column. So this doesn't work at all. Which means that the only thing that might work is the other way round. Now, if this works, now let's just think about this. So, it, no, it's going to be the same problem again. It's, it's identical. It's just the logic sort of the other way around. These two now have to add up to either. Yeah, I mean, l l let's just do it to convince ourselves. OK, you'd end up here. But now this square here needs to add up to uh, five. So this square here would have to be a 2 or a 3, and it can't be. We've already got the 2 and the 3 used up. If we go with 6, these two squares have to be 2 and 4 because we need the outies to add up to 6. This square has to be a 2 or a 4. It doesn't work. Now, what about 7 this way around? Let's just double check this fails as well because this, this does fail. For exactly the same problem. Oh, no, the 8 could go here. Ah! Oh, maybe this is okay. Maybe this is what... Okay, let's double check this more. Sl oh, no, it doesn't work. It fails here. Because what? however I make the outies add up to 7, let's say it's 2, 5. Now, this x here has to use the same digit. It's the same pair we have to use, so it clashes. This would have to be 2, 5, and there's three lots of squares. So it's not the 8 that breaks this. It's this square. Whoa. Okay. But why is this a massive breakthrough? I don't know, but it does tell us this square is not a 1 or a 9. So that's green. And I've... yes! Yes, I've got it. I think. Yes, I have got... I've got it, I've got it. Now, if this is not 1 or 9, this square can't be 1 or 9 because if it, if this square is a 1 or a 9 I've got three outies the furthest away from the from this square I could put the 9 would be here and I've got three cells outside the sandwich which have to add up to X which is impossible so this doesn't work this is not uh, this is green and why does this matter well, now I've got to figure out which cell it is in this column that takes a cell from column four of the grid. We know one of them has to. We proved that earlier. Well, which one is it now? It can't be this one because this can't be a one or a nine. Neither of these can do it. 
This can't do it. It's got to be this one. This is a 1 or a 9. This is a 1 or a 9. I can't have more than two outies here. So this must be a 1 or a 9. This one can't reach this square. So this is a 1 or a 9. And finally, I'm not going to say we're cooking with gas because we are most certainly cooking with, I don't know, some very wet coal at the moment. <laughs> but I still don't know X. I still don't know anything, really. But I do know a little tiny bit more about the ones and the nines than I did before. That square's got to be green. That square's got to be white. Those all turn green. That turns green. Oh, actually, I get look, I get a 1 or a 9 in column 3 because I can't put the 1 or the 9 up there or there wouldn't be any outies. So I do get another 1 or a 9. That's a 1 or a 9. Actually, I've just spotted I'm going to get a digit in the grid. I'm going to get a digit in the grid. Look, if this has to be a 1 or a 9 and it's a 0 clue, this has to be a 1 or a 9 and it can't be a 1. So that's a 9. That's a 1. That's a 1. That's a 9. That's a 9. That's a 1. And our coal is getting drier. Um, that's got to be a one in one of those cells. Those two turn green. That's not a nine. Um, now, do we get further? Surely. Oh, yeah, look, this is an X clue. And now we know the position of the one is here. This can't go too far. It can't be here for the nine because that would be a three cell sandwich and I've spent about 45 minutes explaining why we can't span this gap with a three cell sandwich. So this cannot be uh, a one or a nine, which means there's a one or a nine here, which means that's green. Uh, in fact, we know all of those are green from the one nine pair there. This is X plus one. Ah, but this, so this has a friend here. So those turn green. If this is X plus one, it must be that one for a one or a nine there. That must turn green. Those turn green. And okay, we get to this position. Now, can, ah, now, if we know this is a 1 or a 9, this square turns green because 33 minus x is far too large to have a 9 here. These two both turn green. That means that's got to be a 1 or a 9. We don't know anything about column 8 or row 6, so we're a little bit struggling. Can that still be a 1 or a 9? 33 minus x. We still don't know what x is. x is 5, 6 or 7 still. Ah! At least I can, actually I can fill in some options though now. So if x is 5, 6 or 7 and this is equal to x plus 1, that's got to be 6, 7 or 8. Um, <laughs> okay. Oh, that one. So this has got to be equal to 2 or x, which is 5, 6 or uh, can't Oh, oh, but we don't know. Ah, I thought that was going to rule out x being 5, but it doesn't because, of course, this could just be equal to 2 and x could still be 5. 2x is impossible here, though, because 2 times x is 10, 12 or 14. I can't put that into this square. This square has got to equal uh, 5, 6, or 7. That's got to be equal to x. Oh, the outies in column... Ah, so this might not have given it to me, but that gives it to me. Because this square has got to equal x. It's the outie in this column, and it can't equal 5. So x is not 5, it's 6 or 7. That means that's not 6. This isn't 5, this is isn't six. And uh, 
Okay. <laughs> um, ah, no, hang on, look, we can do something with box one here. This domino adds up to X. This domino also adds up to X, which means X cannot equal six, because if it does, I've got to put two and four into all those squares. That won't work. So X finally is equal to seven. Seven. Oh, this one. So we rule out six from this. X is equal to seven. So this is equal to eight. These squares, therefore, have got to be the two ways of adding up to seven. So it's two, five or three, four. Those two, ah, these two squares are six and eight to complete the box. There's an eight here, eight, six. Ah, now hang on, look. If we look along row one, those three squares have got to be two, three, four, and five. But now, where do we put the nine in this row? We've got to make the total equal x. So if we go here, we have a two cell total. So these two squares would have to be to either two, five, or three, four. And we've now got five cells in box two that have to be selected from four different numbers. Axiomatically, we're going to have to repeat a number to do that and that will break Sudoku rules. So what we can say is this can't be a 9. So this is the 9 therefore this is a 7 because x is equal to 7. And ah is that all I get from that? I can turn that green look Maybe that's useful. Oh, that is useful because now I need to put um, I need to put a nine in this column. It can only go here. Look, and now this can't be one because this total is x. It's definitely not zero. So the one goes there. Those two turn green. X means that. Look, I'm actually getting somewhere here. This must be a nine. This must be equal to x. So that's seven. 7 goes in one of those three squares, 1 goes in one of these three squares, these two turn green. Um, oh, now this is lovely, look, this square, this clue is equal to x, x is 7. So can I ever make that square a 1? Well the answer is no, <laughs> because now 7 is inside the sandwich along with another digit. So this is, we can't put 0 as the other digit. That's going to break. This is not one. Um, let's delete that. So it's not one. This isn't one because it's green. So this must be one. And this must be seven because we need this total to work. That means that's a nine. That's a one. That's a nine. One must go here by Sudoku. One, nine. And. There you go. I've done all the ones and nines. <laughs> Only took me an hour. Um, now, can we go? Can we go further than this? Yes, I can. Thirty-four minus x is the clue for this column. So x is seven now. So thirty-four minus x is twenty-seven. So these six cells add to twenty-seven. Plus one plus nine is thirty-seven. This square's got to be equal to eight. 8 there by Sudoku. 8 there by Sudoku. 8 here by Sudoku. So we get, a, we've done most of the 8s now. Um, now this clue, 33 minus x, so 33, so the 26 is the sandwich total here. Ah, well that's important. That's got to be 5 then, because this must be 5, 6, 7, 8. That's the only way of getting that high in 4 cells. So we get those digits. That's a 6 by Sudoku. These squares have got to be 2, 3, and 4. Those have got to be 5 and 6. Let's complete the box. Um, two three four so these clues are all done 
ah, this clue now, 35 minus, ah, this isn't 2x anymore, this is 35 minus x, so it's 28. The outies have got to add up to 7, so this has to be a 2. Now, these two had to add up to x, x is 7, so 2, 5 is ruled out here, 3, 4 is ruled out here, therefore. What, what on earth have I just done there? That's got to be 2, 5. These have got to add up to 7. So those two squares have got to be 3 and 4. Those two squares have got to be 2 and 5. 5, 6 here resolves it. That's 5, that's 2. This has got to be 3 or 4. Ah, this is an 8 total, look. So these two squares can't use 1, 7. They've got to be 2, 6 or 3, 5. Now that can't be 5, so that can't be 3 because of this 5 here. Seven's got to be in one of those squares. Seven's got to be in one of those squares as well. Ah, nice. So look, sevens now. Nice X-wing pattern on sevens. So if we were to try and make that square a seven, oh dear, dear. The implication would be that both of those squares would have to equal seven. Again, that's going to break the rules of Sudoku. So we can say with certainty, this is not seven. That's a two. Actually, we can say also with certainty, we need to put a 7 in row 5. It can only go here. This is not a 2. 2, 2. There must be, Ah, 2's there by Sudoku. 3, 4, and 6 into these squares to complete this column. 3, 4, and 7 into those squares. So this, this enormously complicated clue, 0 or 2 or x or 2x, ended up being a 2. I mean, that is so mean, Prowling Tiger, I have to say. I mean, you could have just left this blank almost. <laughs> that's not 2, look. Oh, if that's not... Ah, OK, here we go. These have to add up to 8, don't they? So they've got to be 3 and 5 if we can't use two, so this isn't a three. That's got to be a four, six to complete the row. Five, five, five. These two squares have got to be four, ah, these two have got to be four and six to complete the box. There's a six here. So six and four go in. That's not four. These have got to be three, five to complete uh, column five of the grid. 3, 5 get removed from that square. Oh, and that square's got to be a 4, so that's got to be a 2. Okay, good stuff. That's a 3, 5 pair, therefore this should be a 4, that should be a 3. This cell here should be fillable with a 6, that's working. That 6 fixes the 6 and the 5, that fixes the 3, the 5, the 3. These squares are 2, 4 and 5. I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful I might be able to solve this puzzle. Uh, I know it's taken me a very long time, but it, I did find it very hard today. Um, I'm sorry about that. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure as well that I found the best way through it, but I did find a logical way through it, so that's good. Why on earth I didn't disambiguate the 5 and the 2? Heaven only knows. Now, 2-2. Two, two. There's got to be a 2 in one of those positions. That can't be a four. So well, how do I finish this off then? Um, maybe this column, I need two, three, and four. So this has got to be a three or a four. Two, three, or four, two, three, or four. Three, four, six, and eight. Three, four, six into that square. Uh, so, sorry, um, I've used this clue, used this clue, used this clue. That clue's used, that clue's used. These three are used. That's used, that's used, that's used. This isn't looking good, that's used. <laughs> that and that, ah. Oh, that one. 
Is this this is what I'm meant to have looked at now? Okay, let's so these have to add up to 39. So that's 12, 20, 26. So these three squares have got to add up to 13. Ah, nice. So this one has to be a six because if it isn't, I can't make the other the, them add up to 13. The highest digit for each cell is four, which doesn't work. So that's a six, that's a four, that's a six. This four fixes that this is a three look. Oh, that could be important. Yes, it is four, three, four. Oh, and now I've got a three up here as well. And I had to make them equal 13. So this, this must be a four. So that's a two. Okay, so let's tidy up the pencil markings and see if that tells us anything useful. I'm hoping it will. <laughs> um, so this column, let's look at that. That needs a 3 and an 8. And this 3 it looks like it's going to be very important. So that must be an 8. This must be a 3, 8, 5, 4, 2, 5, 4, 3, 2. And if I haven't, this 3, of course, gives us the 3, 7 over there. That fixes this as being a 7, and that should be a 6. It looks good. I'm going to click check. Let me just have a quick stare. Yes. Wow, what a puzzle. I'm not surprised that not many people have solved that. That is so hard. Um, but fascinating. What an idea it is to... Well... My interpretation of the way that you were meant to solve this puzzle is by thinking about the fact that you could never bridge the central three columns. But there may be a, an, another elegant way of thinking about that or something a little bit a little bit more straightforward. And I'd love to know. So if you spot anything, please let us know in the comments. Uh, please, if you can comment on the other thing I raised earlier as well, that'd be really helpful. Thank you for watching this long video and we'll be back later with another edition and probably a slightly shorter edition of Cracking the Cryptic.